Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me today for this Habitat Now. It is an honor to have you back after the new year. Happy New Year. Um, celebrating NGG 2023. There has been an incredible response for NGG, and the artists that have been in the show have been so incredibly talented, and I love following their careers and see where they're going. I know uh, Michael Janis and Tony Porto just were, to, were at a Context down with their exhibition and their stuff and their space, and then all the other artists I see on social media staying busy. It's, it's a lot of fun to see uh, the careers. And I think uh, Anthony uh, Todd just has a show coming up at Heller, which is exciting too to see his work actually get into a, a, a Heller gallery for an exhibition, which is fantastic. So I'm honored to have everybody uh, join me today for this presentation. Oh, I'm going to take over your screen real quick and go through a little housekeeping. You'll see my little uh, first contemporary glass art gallery icon. So I know where I'm at. We're in full blown planning for the Glass Coast weekend down in Sarasota, Florida. Many of you plan on coming. Um, it's gonna be an incredible experience. It's at the same location as last year at the Ringling College of Art and Design and their soundstage, which is like a huge room with 30 foot ceilings. We built an entire display and it's only open for four days for our, and one of the very first day is a VIP event. We'll talk about that. So here's a list basically of what's happening. You'll be touring the Bash Gallery, checking out four exhibitions. <laughs> You'll be uh, doing checking out the VIP charity preview, an auction, a scavenger hunt, Deanna Clayton's glass class, all kinds of fun stuff. And artists are coming in too. Davide Salvadori, Martin Blank, Shelly Allen, Michael Barons is probably coming, Michael Janis, Wilfred Gruten, Stephanie Trenchard, and much more. So if you are jonesing for an experience, this is definitely a thing to be down in Florida. It's easy to do. And we'll be partnering with the Imagine Museum as well for their incredible uh, event of their five-year anniversary gala. So here's an example of the exhibitions. It's Gravity Bound Art, Legendaries, Artists, Pioneers, and uh, Between Worlds, uh, Wilford Greeton's solo exhibition. So plan on being there. These are just some, if you click on our uh, website or you can message me, there's a whole brochure of the program. This is some of the, the Pioneer exhibition, the Gravity Bound exhibition. There'll be an auction. We're working on that right now. Uh, which Dan Fox, who does our photography, many of you know, he is in the gallery at the moment shooting artwork, and he is incredible. And the date is the 24th, February, just so you know. Then uh, time goes by. We have the glass tour in planning. I've talked about this a couple of times. They're sending out the, the costs and the, uh, the whole itinerary. If you've ever been on one of these, Habitat's been doing these from the, since the 90s, visiting galleries and studios and institutions and home tours. And now they do it on a cruise ship. It's it's so easy. You just get on the boat and everything's taken care of. So if you haven't done one of these, I recommend it highly. And then obviously in June, we are planning our international here. So plan on that. Overlaying the gas co conference, which will be here for anyway. So expect an exciting time. So on with NGG. So this is our third year, which is incredibly exciting. First, second, third, right? And um, it was born during the pandemic, exposing art artists who work in their own style, not so much conformity, but creating artwork that has in depth and meaning. So the artists invited, I won't really read this, but they're all on the NGG website and the winners are gonna be the last four months. I've kind of associated it there from 2022. Pearl Dick, Morag Riki, John Moran and Krista Israel are, have been invited back. And then the two artists that won the first year are now uh, NGG Emeritus and gonna be part of the panel selecting the winners for the next year. So. All that said, I want to invite Kimberly Thomas to say hello. She is our honored uh, first, and she is the bold. It's always fun to see who goes first uh, for these things. But, you know, the, the first person that does it, the better, uh, because you get right in front of people's faces. So let me stop sharing my screen and invite you to say hi to everybody. Please, Kimberly. Hello. <laughs> where are you? Where are you coming from? Where are you right now? Um, Tell us where you're I'm at. I'm in Denver, uh, Colorado right now. and. Um, um, you know, I live in the suburbs here and I just moved, um, maybe like six months ago from Detroit and before that Philadelphia and before that Texas and before that California. So, <laughs> and then there's other places before that, but, um, yeah, I just moved out here and I was living in Detroit for, um, it was like during the pandemic. Um, so it wasn't as exciting as Detroit normally is. But um, uh, 
yeah, I just decided to move here and um, it's pretty good. Yeah. So you build, you're building a studio there. You, you're not really a studio. You have a, a community there. What's the community yeah. called? A flame um, workers that you part the of The studio that I work in is called The Portal and it's about 10 different artists, um, all flame workers. And then we have a, um, the mayor, Coons, and he <laughs> runs the shop and um you know, we have cold working area and um, benches. And it's a really nice studio. I call it an all-inclusive resort because um, there's like packing and shipping upstairs and, um, you know, like the oxygen and propane is, you know, kind of included. And it's, it's a really, like, nice it's really to good studio. Yeah. It's come really to a place with all the bumps worked yeah. out already. Yeah, exactly. I have really? my own studio in Philly and um, it's just a lot to um take care of and manage so I decided that I would leave that studio and just work in a studio where everything is taken care of because then I can focus more on my work so from an outsider's mm -hmm. perspective uh, mm -hmm. when you join a group like this is there like a it's like a rental fee for owning renting a space how does yeah. that work exactly mm -hmm. so to get an so, idea yeah you move in well you have to be I guess invited into the studio and then um yeah, you pay to go to work. Right. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you go. So it's worth it. <laughs> it, it kind of makes sense in a way because all those things are taken yeah. care of. There has to be some kind of community. Somebody, to keep it yeah, alive. somebody has to pay for it. So we pay studio rent and um, yeah, then you just set up all, you, you need all of your equipment, so like your own forge, regulators, hoses, tools, kilns. And um, if you need another plug, we have to call the electrician to come in. And, you know, there's additional fees sometimes, but generally your rent takes care of everything. Gotcha. So I guess it's yeah. kind of worth it, though, because it's all handled correctly. Yeah. And is, is there a lot of like loaning and borrowing or is it kind of like yours is yours? Um, we borrow. Oh, I mean, whatever hours is ours, but every once in a while, hey, do you have a rod of this color? Can mm -hmm. I use? this thing can I put this in your kiln and you know that kind of stuff it's nice to have um, that kind of camaraderie which is yeah great. and well, all of the people that I work with we've been friends like we haven't necessarily worked together the whole time but mm -hmm. we've known each other for at like at least 10 years most of oh, us and cool. then, yeah so um yeah the flame working or at least pipe making community we get only to work very closely and travel a lot. So chances are somebody has stayed at your house, mm. on your couch, <laughs> or you've worked with them in some studio in some way. And, you know, we see each other at trade shows and everything. So. And then the last question before we get to your presentation is um, mm -hmm. collaboration work. Does that ever happen in a place like that? Or is it all like individuals mostly all the time? Um, yes. Collaboration happens. Uh, fairly frequently. Um, actually, I just did a couple of like small pieces with two of my shop mates. But um, collaboration is very common in pipe working or pipe making um, community. And a lot of times, like you know, you'll go on a tour to like a you know couple of different cities or just one city. And since there's you know like maybe ten or you know people in a studio set up shop for a week and try to work with everyone and make something cool. Very cool. Well, <laughs> yeah. thank you for joining us, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. I posted your resume kind of in the emails, uh, mm. getting going your, your history and your graduation from RISD. But if you will take mm. over the screen right now, we can start your presentation and get okay. a little idea of uh, who you are, mm -hmm. what you do, why you do it, and what you make, yeah. which is kind of what we're looking for today. So Okay. Feel free. You should have authorization to share your screen. All right. So let's I get through that, that big hurdle of these Zooms mm -hmm. and make sure yeah. we can connect. Hope everybody's, yeah. hope everybody had a great new year. It's great to have you all join me. And it's, I see some people from NGG coming up too. Mike and Jeffrey, thank you for joining us today. It's good seeing you guys. I'm sure other people are around. I can't see off the top of my head, but it's awesome to have you here. And there we go. We got the screen sharing. Almost working. It's loading. And there we are, you're green. All right. Well, thank you, you for joining you? us. You're all good. We can see you. Okay. Because yep. my, my little screen of me is like... It's a little choppy, but don't worry. Everybody's looking at your uh, okay, good. Yeah. presentation okay. anyway. Okay. You got that Max Hedrum thing going on. 
<laughs> I know. It keeps doing that. I have a very old computer. Um, so anyway, um, my name is Kimberly Thomas. I, like I said, I live in Denver right now. I don't know where I'll move to next. Um, I am a glass artist, inventor, and storyteller. And this is me working at, I did a residency at Pilchuck, the air residency, and this photo is from there. Um, some of the work that I'm going to show you today is I made um, there. You often wear giant rings, though. Well. Yes, I do. I love <laughs> jewelry. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I like to wear big earrings and, um, you know. Uh, Good stuff. Especially <laughs> yeah. while you're working. Mm -hmm. I know. And you know what? Like sometimes my ring hits my tube and I think that my glass is breaking, but <laughs> I have to remind myself that it's just the jewelry. Gotcha. So um, I started out in, well, I went to RISD and I was a ceramics major there. And from there, I moved um, back to Connecticut and I painted portraits at um, little figurines at um, a place called Danbury Mint. And then I decided to become a special effects makeup artist and moved to California. I went to makeup school and became, um, became a makeup artist, special effects makeup artist and worked for a guy named Kevin Haney. Um, he won Oscar for Driving Miss Daisy. And um, yeah, he did a bunch of stuff. He tend to come up. Um, anyway, so I started out uh, with Glass. Uh, in pipe making and um you know it was like I kind of consider that like more uh practice for me those first 10 years I guess <laughs> um and kind of making these weird sculptures testing how to you know put in como and uh I don't know just anatomy I guess in a way so these are some of the kind of pipes that I would make just like kind of very weird um, trying to make teeth look very real and then exaggerating other features. And this is an animal that I invented called the finger bunny. <laughs> so I was making fingers, like a bunch of fingers. And then I was like, what am I going to do with these fingers? So I made a little face, like a little rabbit. And I showed it to my friend and he was like, why didn't you just put them on a hand? And I was like, huh. That would have been a good idea too. So um, just like weird experimental type of things and, you know, making animals and, you know, it's pipe making. So makes me think you watched I, a lot of Ren and Stimpy. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I never watched it. Really? It gross. Oh, really? <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just these like kind of weird um, animals and, you know, just experimenting with how borosilicate worked and making weird connections and um yeah and like having to make uh things that look that are pipes but don't look like pipes necessarily you know so you could have it on the shelf and your mom wouldn't know that mm -hmm. it was a pipe or it'd be something that you might not want to put your mouth on in real <laughs> life so and um, then I started experimenting more with color and then, you know, uh, more realistic uh, sculpting. And you so- really got those teeth down, that's impressive. Yeah, um, I like teeth because I, I mean, when I like look at people when I'm talking to them, I look at their teeth a lot. And <laughs> just, know. You know, one of those weird, <laughs> I, everybody does that, but it's just, it's like not a good or bad thing. like. It's just interesting. And then um, I was mixing color, like all of the pink and the, uh, for the gums is mixed and then the color of the teeth and, you know, making tiny little stringers to have like the veins um, and texture. So worked on that for a little while. And like I said, most of the, all of the, like this kind of work was just very experimental for me. And, um, you know, kind of like pushing myself to do more and um, really understand glass and how borosilicate works because um, 
you know, in order to like make the things that you really want to make, you re I feel like you really need to understand the material. So that's what I was doing. And then this is another one. This is just like one of my favorite um, little denture uh, vessels, I guess. So, um, but I very rarely make these anymore. And now that I'm thinking about it, I should have had the stopper um, cold work into like a little diamond shape. Hmm. Um, so then I started, um, you know, I'd incorporate these into these like weird little people. This one was in New Glass Review 38. Oh, and I was using um, Gold Luster. And so, oh my goodness, um, Gold Luster is a little different for soft glass than it is for um, borosilicate. So I had to experiment with that with firing temperatures and, um, you know, because it's on a pipe, you know, will it wear off, you know, things like that. Um, so that was, uh, that was a fun experiment with uh, different kind of lusters on borosilicate and making large, very awkward pieces on a sort of smaller Carlisle. <laughs> um, but it's going through like this weird phase. <laughs> yeah. um, and like my work started to kind of move and I just didn't really want to make pipes anymore. Like I, I like pipes and I like my friends and pipe making, but for me necessarily, I felt like I couldn't really tell the stories that I wanted to tell with just a pipe. You know, it was just like um, pipes have to be durable and they have to be functional. And, you know, just, I don't think that my work is always going to, you know, I can't always make it that way. Like I like very delicate glass and I like things that move. And, you know, if you're going to be like using it and dropping it or carrying it with you, you know, it's just not necessarily practical. Some of the things that I make for mm -hmm. um, pipe making and I didn't want to um, make things based on um, what other people need. I wanted to make my own work and make it exactly the way I wanted to make it. So I had to start moving away from pipes. Right, you learn, but, you learn the skill. You, mm -hmm. took the, yeah. you took it where you wanted to, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get that. So part of, yeah, part of that was making, I wanted to make things that move because um, like I worked in, you know, the movies and everything. And I've always been very interested in puppets and animation. So I started making these um, marionettes but I'm still a pipe maker and pipes sell. Uh, so this one didn't sell, but <laughs> mm. other ones did. <laughs> um, uh, so this one is a pipe and, you know, it's kind of honing my skill and still, um, you know, just trying to figure out where I was going and how to make these little joints work. So, um, you know, these little, animals have you know they're usually like on a journey and I put little um like little bottle of poison and then little trinkets that they <laughs> have you know just, some just an idea of scale like how big was that or is that piece um, yeah kind of big maybe like 12 inches okay these were large these are pretty large pieces like now I work like tiny little stuff and then make them into larger pieces mm -hmm. but and also in pipes, like there was, you know, how everything goes through phases, like everybody wanted these like giant things. And then, um, you know, everything got scaled down and now they like really small stuff. And a lot of times too, um, you think you're making it small, but you're actually making it really big. <laughs> you don't realize that until you're putting it together and you're like, wow, this is so heavy hmm. and really scary. So. And this is another, this one's Alabaster. And he is my pet cool hound from hell that <laughs> comes to, to earth and drags me down to hell with him sometimes. And then I have to like find my way back. And, you know, I uh, look out the window and I see his eyes glowing outside and I have to feed him ashes and blood. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to keep him happy 
Um, it's like kind of a weird story, but you know, part, part of the book you're writing, right? Yeah, <laughs> this is a different book. <laughs> oh, different book. Got it. So, um, yeah, I thought that was. I wanted to make rooms for all of these like little um, puppets, so I might go back and do that now that I figured out exactly how to how to make them. But this, I like horror movies, so that was like you know one of my the horror genre um, puppet. Does, does the name uh, Gamork mean anything to you? No. no. It's the, the wolf from the never ending story. Oh, I didn't. Re- that's right. I just didn't remember that. Mm-hmm. That was like one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. Um, and uh, the dark crystal is mm-hmm. my favorite. So, um, next I was trying to figure out how to, you know, like my puppets didn't have like, very, I didn't like the backgrounds for them. So, I was trying to figure out like how I would make these little stages for um, my puppets. And I was also very drawn to the sky at this point. And I wanted to, you know, make these environments and, um, you know, I like the theater. And like I said, I, I like, um, movies and film industry. So making work that was kind of like, uh, you know, narrative and visual and kind of just drawing you in or like, you know, taking you or showing you a world that um you know you didn't know existed and that was um and I like mixed media so these were some bronze knuckle that I made or had a friend help me make and so there's glass on one side and this cloud um motif um was becoming very interesting to me so here is um another pipe um it's uh more of like, this is the work that I've started doing now. And um, these small kind of mundane objects, kind of see them everywhere, rubber gloves and buckets and um, uh, shoes, you know, traffic cones, they're everywhere. There's so many of them. Um, But this piece, this one is a pipe and it's a hot and cold construction, which I had never, I mean, I've done it before, but not uh, as many pieces in a hot construction. Um, so, you know, I just really like how this one came out. And, um, you know, it still has the mixed media, the brick walls, and then um, I use nails for the television antennae. Um, you and I talked about, like, the individual pieces, where right? You don't pre-make them. You mm-hmm. kind of make them in your vision for one piece and that comes yeah. together. It takes a lot of time, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Everything takes forever. And <laughs> I tend to, well, you know, I think of a piece and then I um, kind of decide on a theme sometimes. Like, you know, like, oh, well, I really want a television here. And I think, of, uh, you know, traffic cone will go. And then I make all of those pieces and then... I will figure out how they'll fit together or I have to manipulate them again so that I can bend them to put them, you know, in the right spot. Um, but yes, I don't have just like an inventory. I mean, sometimes I do. I'll like make a bunch of something because I know I'll probably use that piece again. Like the cones we'll see in the yes, coming piece. exactly. Because like I know I'm going to use a lot of those. I make a bunch one day. But then when I go to put the piece together, I always need more Mm -hmm. and then um or I want you know I want other stuff in it you know or I think of another object to make and having the vocabulary and you know the um in my work is very important so I can talk more about that later but um as far as pipes go this is another pipe gas can um so uh a lot of the things that I make is because I've seen them somewhere um and I at one point there was all these gas cans you know on the highway so I was like hmm, that's interesting all of your gas cans um fall off of the back of your truck and just end up on the highway mm. same with the traffic cones and these are um other pipes um, that I've made and they are inspired by the um, I mean, the work that I'm making now. So, 
Yeah, I like these. Isn't it they're, they're very fun. <laughs> yeah, and these little brick wall segments in the cinder block. It's very fun. They're really cool. And little boots. You know, they're, these are maybe three, or this one is like a three by three or something like that. So not everything is really tiny and not everything is really big. You can make like, you know, like a palm size type of thing. And I just like to make objects, you know. In your like style, a, which is always yeah. interesting. You take something mm -hmm. and turn it into your own. Yeah. Over and over, which is, which is kind of like the idea mm -hmm. of making your mark. You have your own design and style for the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then also I make things, you know, like you come up with an idea um, start making it, and then I feel like I need to um, perfect it. So I'll make it a few times, and it's like, oh, maybe I should do it this way, or if I start, you know, another way. And finally, I have the process down, and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily easy to ever make, but um, you know, it's I can do it in like a not super long amount of time, and it comes out exactly the way I want it. So you know, the perfectionist, um, I mean, nothing's perfect because it's really dirty and it's like all worn out and everything, but the way I make it is I try to perfect that um, every time. And then um, we started, <laughs> this is uh, one of the series I'm working on, which is called The Escape. And The Escape is, um, well, they're, I call them, uh, sculptural illustrations, and it is a story of um, how to escape the planet Earth and travel through time into different dimensions, um, like a little adventure traveling um, story. On your, on your own invention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I have inventions. So part of this was um, flying. Um, you know, you have to, like, go to different, through different portals and, you know, like having to fly away or drift away. And um, I, I have to skip to the next slide was a, a cloud riding contraption. So you, you know, there's a basket and a span and you have to turn the cranks and everything and attach it to clouds and then you can like drift away. And then I realized that, um, how do you get the clouds? <laughs> So I had to come up with an invention to um, get clouds. Mm -hmm. And this is the cloud capturing apparatus. <laughs> and so there's these uh, tiny little bellows and you step on the bellows and um, it creates the suction from the cones at the top and the little net captures the, the clouds. Mm -hmm. So you have to like step on them and like start the uh, funnel for the suction. And it'll start sucking the clouds all down and it has to be, you know, kind of closer to the sky so that you can get the clouds more easily. And then once you've collected your clouds, you scoop them up and then you attach them to your cloud riding machine. And then you start turning your cranks and you'll start to drift away. And then you can search for the portals all across, you know, the world. And, you know, obviously you have to do a lot of searching because you don't know exactly where these portals are. But, um, you know, so you'd have to build more than one because you'll like move to a certain place and you probably have to set up camp and um, think of more inventions and travel around. Hire some people to do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you need help. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the second um, cloud riding contraption in the series. And... I thought, well, um, you know, I move around a lot and I just kind of think of myself as a, a loner. And I felt like um, not everybody's like that. Like maybe you have a dog or your friend wants to come with you. But ultimately, you know, I think that you will find the portals, um, you know, by yourself. Um, so this uh, this one was has a little bit more space um, so that, but you know, it doesn't have, I'm afraid of heights. So this is one thing that I was thinking about. Um, I need to make, I did invent it. I haven't made it yet, but it's a, a device that keeps you from fainting, <laughs> having vertigo. 
<laughs> so it has these like little um you know those uh what are those things called now when you crush them like you know the boxers use them to like wake themselves up when they get knocked out anyway uh, it's like a like device a salt, that's, salt sticks yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it'll like crush the the things and then it'll you know the smell will wake you up while you're flying yeah. and until you get used to it uh, look forward to seeing that one we had some of these pieces <laughs> on display during uh, mm -hmm. one of our shows and mm -hmm. they found a home during smelling sots thank you paul yeah uh, we thank had uh, a, a, a works placed at the imagine museum which will be out soon sometime mm -hmm. soon jane who's with us mentioned which i'm excited mm -hmm. to see down there so it's great to have your work in public display mm -hmm. yeah i can't wait to go <laughs> um so that this is um the second one but there'll be other cloud writing contraptions and i felt like they were becoming like kind of complicated like you know this one they're um what is the word i'm looking for articulated so they have moving parts on them, like the fan on the front has a uh, um, crank, and then the wheel on the bottom uh, turns also, and then this uh, drive shaft can be, um, it's a kickstart. So you'd like kick the little hammer um, and it would spin the broom propeller in the front. And it works, I mean, I don't think you should really play with it all the time, <laughs> but there's a lot of moving parts on those. And, you know, all the little chains are individual links and you have to put it together. Those those clouds are sure strong. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> One time my nephew asked me, he's like, how are you going to get the clouds to, you know, to fly? And, she, and I was like, <laughs> like <laughs> what they do just you just do <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> i was like shut up <laughs> so um oh this is another um invention is the underpants parachute mm -hmm. so if you are in a situation where you want to leave really bad and i mean if it's in a tall building or on a cliff you can take your underpants off and <laughs> jump and use them as a parachute. <laughs> so a lot of these, you know, inventions are rather silly, but you've been in the situation where you're like, oh my God, I want to leave so bad. And, um, you know, you kind of do anything. I mean, for especially like people like me who, you know, I like crowds and I like going out, but ultimately I feel like I'm, uh, kind of introverted and I get a little exhausted after a while so I was thinking plus you have to also be wearing underpants <laughs> use this invention but um you know bricks and little broken bottles and chairs are um like imagery that uh even underpants um that I use um over and over again and this is the latest cloud riding contraption that I've made and was a little um, complicated. I don't think the cloud riding contraption needs to be that complicated. Like it could really just be a, a basket, like the first one, and then some type of propulsion. And, um, but I move a lot. So I think about stuff and things and, uh, I really don't have very many of uh, my things right now because it's all in a storage unit in Detroit. Um, so you think about moving and how I'm gonna get that stuff here, which is actually, it's not a complicated thing, but it's just a matter of doing it. Um, so that is a thing, you know, there's just, you know, things that you think about while you're making your work and sometimes it come out, um, yeah, I guess subconsciously. And this with, kind of piece where there's um, pieces mm -hmm. on the ground, Mm -hmm. Is this like the, it was built right here or is the, the thing slowly disintegrating? What are your thoughts <laughs> about the stuff um, on the ground? This one, that is exactly it. It was built there. And so um, this is kind of like taking off and leaving um, from one location to the next. And, um, you know, like uh, all of these contraptions, I kind of picture myself like um, walking around and picking up junk and then bringing it back to my my lair where I build my contraptions and um yeah it's that. very it's, it's <laughs> very like it makes you feel um mm -hmm. like enlightened in a way where it's such a fun topic mm -hmm. where you can use your your imagination into mm -hmm. 
a new, a new, like you were talking about a new area, a new arena, a new dimension mm -hmm. without with letting go of letting go of the stress and letting go of mm -hmm. the, the, the worry, jump yeah. on the machine and go for, go for a ride mm -hmm. and change, change your reality. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that you said that mm -hmm. <laughs> because part of this was, um, I, I, I don't know what happened to me, but I think I was having like a dark night of the soul type of situation. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know when that happens, like you, your perspective changes and I wanted to, I don't know, I wanted my life to be different, I guess, in a way. And, um, not totally different, just like certain things about it. And, um, things that were important, uh, weren't, uh, important to me anymore. And I was like, maybe it was just like getting older or whatever, but it was very drastic, um, change in pers like perspective for me. And, um, that, uh, influenced this kind of work and the other, uh, the other series, the short stories that I do also. So, um, uh, what were they doing? Oh yeah, I had um, the residency at Pilchuck. And when I was like thinking about all of these uh, kind of things, um, I realized like, you know, I'm not from earth, like none of us really are. And I'm kind of just visiting here. And it's like, our time is temporary. So I, um, I just gave up my apartment and like went on the road and it became, you know, that was like when I was in Detroit and my intention was to come back. Um, and I did. And then I changed my mind <laughs> and left again. But it was just when I realized these things about like being on earth and existence, um, giving up my apartment and just uh, going on the road. And like I had places to stay and I stayed with family and friends and everything and went and did um, residencies. I knew I had places to go, but it was easy to give up my apartment and just not really have a home for uh, a year or so. So the four months turned into uh, six months, turned into nine months. And then, um, you know, um, it was like living in my brother's basement <laughs> in Detroit. <laughs> and that was fine. But I was like, you know, having, I'm, you know, the kind of person that likes to have their own space. But at the same time, I was like, you know, I should be traveling and I should be doing all these things because my time here is temporary and I'm here to have experiences mm -hmm. and an interesting life. And that will make my work um, better and more insightful. And I'll, I don't know, maybe become, like you said, enlightened. So that's part of, um, I guess my work has like a spiritual kind of uh, thing to it. Um, but Thank that you. has to, you know, be escape. So next slide. Um, this is a robot and I actually, my nephew named it. It's like sweet baby trash can. And, um, you know, I kind of think about working and, uh, like the character for, you know, the story and, you know, are we robots? Like are we humans are kind of very easily, um, I wouldn't say manipulated, but um, influenced in a way. And, you know, the working stiff, like, you know, even as an artist, like, you have to get up every day and you have to be disciplined and you have to um, work, you know, it's not like just every, like a lot of people think that it's like super fun all the time and we're just hanging out in the studio partying. <laughs> and <laughs> it's not always like that. So, um, you know, Plus, robots are cool. So, <laughs> um, this one is Brickfoot, Brixby. And so I imagine myself in this junkyard and I have a trailer and I go out every day in my truck with my wolf dog, Alabaster, and we collect parts um, for making our inventions and our robots and our cloud riding contraptions. And one of my other inventions is called the brainwave accelerator terminal. <laughs> and <laughs> I, well, cause I teach, I'm very interested in how people think. And um, when I first moved to Detroit, um, I moved in, with, I lived in my brother's basement again uh, for a month. And 
His name is Brandon Wesley Allen Thomas, and he is an engineer, and I think he's one of the smartest people on the earth. <laughs> so um, he has a really good memory. And I think part of being um, really smart and being a genius is remembering stuff. So as an engineer, I think you have to remember probably a lot of things. Um, so I invented this um, machine. Um, part of it, you know, like all the uh, inventions are made of junk. And um, it's, I haven't finished it yet because it requires, like I said, a lot of different parts. And I started making this chair pile thinking it'd be like, oh, 20 chairs. No, it's going to be like 20,000 chairs. So this machine is, um, there's a terminal and then that is connected to um, like a little helmet. And then, you know, there's some conductive material on the top of this pile of chairs because it has to be closer to the sky. You wait for a thunderstorm and it electrocutes that conductive material and it goes through the terminal and it electrocutes your brain mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you can stimulate your frontal cortex so that your memory um, works better. So I got, got a question from you for you, Kimberly. Okay. Like, go back one slide to the okay. machine itself. What's mm -hmm. the scale of that? Is it palm size? Is it just an um, idea? The wheelbarrow is, yeah, palm size. I have a somewhat, you can't tell, obviously, but a small lady hand. And um, so, like, four, three, four and a half, five inches, like, not bigger than that. And then the terminal, um, probably two and a half, three, like one and a half inch gotcha. type of size. Miniatures. I love tiny stuff, little tiny junk. And um, yeah, all of these little like thin stringers and everything are also very tiny. Thank so, you. uh huh. Um, so, this is, these are all, these are some of the things that are in my storage unit in um, Detroit. And I felt like they were like too fragile, like the chair pile was too fragile to like travel across the country with. And knowing that it was going to be really big, um, really, I left it there so I could be in a place where I knew I was going to be for a long time before I finished it. So that's coming up. Um, this is the volcano, part of the volcano um, eruption encouragement system. And this is, um, a partially finished piece also, but just to let you know about um, how I do work. Plus, I like to think about things. You know, it's like um, you start making something and then um, I feel like maybe you need more courage or you have to think about how um, it's gonna look and how it's gonna work and try a couple of pieces out before um, you finish your uh, conceptualizing of, uh, you know, some, the piece that you want in. Anyway, the volcano eruption encouragement system is if there are no clouds and you want to um, start on your next journey with your cloud riding contraption. And, um, you know, you have to like dig a hole and then you fill it with like, uh, you know, you start a fire and, um, uh, you need a pogo stick to stimulate the ground and then eventually like it'll shoot um, lava um, out of it. Yeah. You know. Obviously. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, um, I mean, a lot of people say like, oh, this is like a kid's book. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Could be a calling, you know, you have the narrative and the creativity of creating uh, something, yeah. kind of st a story. Mm -hmm. Based on yeah. an idea, and that's what kids' mm -hmm. books are basically like to promote creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's I feel like it's for adults too. You know, like mm -hmm. probably get a pretty. Like, and yeah, we need it by far. Yeah, a lot of us exactly. have forgot our creativity, mm -hmm. myself included. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of different um, like funny inventions that I make, and um, so this is an example of how I make stuff. There's like a bunch of tiny little parts, and then I. Um, put them all together. Um, and then there's some traffic cones. 
uh, and gas cans from the highway in Detroit. And this is part of the conductive material that will be on top of the, the chair pile for the brainwave accelerator terminal. And chairs. So we were talking the other day, um, Aaron and I, and we're talking about uh, the meaning of these chairs. And these chairs were for part of um, uh, a group project with uh, related tactics. And it was, um, uh, we went to Tyler and we took over the uh, glass department and it was a group of um, uh, people of color. And we all worked in the studio and we created um, just work together. And it was a really great experience for me. And I was really happy to be a part of it. And so I made these chairs and I was thinking about um, my place in the world and saving place for others. But after we talked, Aaron, I thought of this story because I am a storyteller. And when I was in college, I was taking, um, you know, art history classes and my uh, professor's name was Mary Bergstein. And I really enjoyed her classes and I thought she was very smart and um, I got good grades in her class. Anyway, one day I was running late for class and I woke up late and I'm like run walking to class and it was cold and I was like wearing this long coat and I was sweating and I get to class and I like swing the door open. And I was like, oh my God, I'm here. And she was like, oh, Kim, um, we saved you a seat. And I was like, oh, okay. So I sat down and I was really happy about that. So then after class, um, one of the other students, my friend was like, I tried to sit in that seat and she told me to move. She was <laughs> like, hey, yeah, don't sit there. That's Kim's seat. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I just always remember that. Like that was, uh, yeah, I was not expecting her, you know, nobody was like saving me seats anywhere, you know, so that was, um, you know, just very meaningful to me. So these chairs, you know, represent, um, you know, that type of feeling and saving this spot. Um, right. We also talked yeah. about, you know, with yeah. the, with your role in the art world, mm -hmm. your role in the glass community, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere a spot mm -hmm. uh, could be available or is available or should yeah. be available or someone mm -hmm. else saving it for somebody else. There's room mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah. When we talked about sitting around a bonfire, pulling up one more chair. Mm -hmm. Just the idea that mm -hmm. it's a great community to 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 collaborate and to be together. It's kind mm -hmm. of interesting of a concept. There's a lot of meaning behind chairs. Yeah, that's what I think. So, um, you know, chairs are definitely, um, you know, one part of my vocabulary and the meaning of that um, is, is very deep to me. Um, and then I take those chairs, you know, make my little piles. Um, that piece did become a pile of chairs, but I like to take all of these um, little objects that I make and then I'll, you know, place them in different arrangements and try to stack them up and take pictures and then take them all apart and then use them for, you know, a permanent uh, piece. And then I make other little objects. This is, um, I call this a glass slipper, um, you know, the cinder block and Cinderella you know, but a more, um, I guess, uh, current or hip uh, <laughs> version of it. And obviously they're very tiny. So these are just little objects that I like making, you know, if I put, make, you know, a little shoe and then I was like, well, these shoes are really cute. So I kind of want to put them with something else that's very cute. <laughs> so these little combinations of, um, of objects. And this is my favorite street in Detroit, Mack Avenue. And <laughs> Aaron was like, oh my God, don't tell this. Don't worry, it's nowhere close to where the glass um, conference is gonna be. <laughs> but I really like this picture because it kind of reminds me of my work, but it also just reinforces that, like, you know, we're, um, you know, the sun and the moon have their own agenda. And, we can do whatever we want. I mean, obviously there's consequences, but um, you know, 
like as an artist, if you think about that, it's very freeing. And if you think I can do whatever I want, and this is, you know, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. And you, it's just a nice way to feel, you know, it's like you have that freedom to make all of the things that you could ever imagine. And um, not worrying about, is this going to sell? Is it going to be popular? Are people going to like it? Um, if you make the things that you like, um, it's just 100% better because that's how I felt. I was in pipes and I was making, I, you know, I was making stuff that other people wanted. And honestly, I don't have a lot in common with people who buy pipes. So I don't really know what they want, but I know myself, I know what I want. Mm -hmm. And I want to make little tiny piles of junk and weird inventions and that's when I started making those things, the things that I wanted to happen in my career started happening. And um, that was a bonus. I was just happier with my life. So in general, you know, it was like, look how, like the sky, it was a beautiful day that day, but there was this disaster <laughs> and it was left there for a couple of days because I saw it on my way home at night um, from the studio when I was like, oh, I hope it's there tomorrow so I can take a picture. And it was, it was, it was there a couple of days. So um, that's just like, you know, it's a reminder to me, like, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter, you know, like, you can have like this t terrible day and don't worry, tomorrow, the sun is going to come out and the moon will come up and you can start all over. And so just, you know, just keep going. It's fine. So this series is called um, Short Stories, and each one of them is kind of a different narrative, and I don't know how much time we have left, so I'm not going to talk about every single one of them, um, but this was the first one, and it was um, kind of during the pandemic um, when nobody was getting their mail, and I kind of want to talk about this one. So I went to the post office, and everybody was really upset and they were, it was like on what street is it? I forget. It's in Detroit. So the post lady or the um, person working there was getting yelled at by everyone. And finally she was just like, forget it. And just left. And then I was like, now nobody's going to get anything. Like at <laughs> least she was here. We had to wait in a long line. But if you hadn't yelled at her, she wouldn't have left so this was just like you know these can be like mundane things that are happening or like you know major events in my life so this one was a major event in my life my dad died suddenly and um it it was terrible you know um so this particular part though was his funeral and my brothers and my dad's best friends were carrying his uh, his coffin out of the church, and it was very heavy. And they had to go down these stairs, and there was just no other way to describe um, that kind of situation. So it's really just about grief, um, and you know, having that kind of thing happen. Like it just was very sudden and very. Um, difficult to deal with and I thought that was going to be the most difficult thing about you know my father dying but it was um afterwards really we had an estate um fight you know with his wife so um you know again my thing about things and having things and do things matter and what what really matters started becoming even more important to me because we were fighting over, um, you know, our father's things. And, you know, his things like weren't necessarily important. And, you know, having to deal with that kind of thing after your parent dies is, like, you don't get to grieve. And you're concentrating on things that just aren't important anymore. And that's just, you know, kind of what my brothers and I have gone through. So these next pieces are just, you know, are about that. 
and these were called left behind. So it was just all of this stuff. He didn't necessarily leave like these particular uh, um, items, but um, you know, it was just like the feeling that I was having. It was just like we were fighting about stuff and just so it was overwhelming. And then this one is a portrait. Um, this was uh, when I was um, I was at uh, Pilchuck doing a residency, and there was uh, a fire hydrant outside. And since I'm a city person, um, you know, being in the woods was it wasn't difficult. I had my car, so I could leave at any time. But um, I don't know. I just like really focused on this fire hydrant for some reason because it was like the only thing that reminded me of a city. And I was scared. I was like, I'm afraid of that um, animals <laughs> in the woods. So, um, and there was, I don't know, it was just, uh, you know, it was like walking back to the studio in the woods at night. It seems like something I would really like, you know, like kind of spooky. But um, I don't know, I liked the fire hydrant. And I was thinking about not just things above ground, but, um, you know, hidden intentions, I guess. And, um, you know, what people are really about. So um, I was thinking about like, you know, there's this fire hydrant here, but like, what is it attached to? Like, you never really see that part. And, you know, like in people, like, do you see their true colors? And so this is about that. Um, still, you know, this one's called The Legacy and it's a graveyard with a bunch of junk in the, the um, yeah, so our estate battle went. It was like a, a saga. It went on for a while. Um, this one is when I'm starting to come out of that. You know, the stuff was uh, things that we were going through with my dad was uh, dying down, and I was talking to my nephew, and he was telling me that he wanted his mom to have another baby, and <laughs> I always tell him that he is my favorite boy. Even and I have a other nieces and a niece and nephew too. So I hope they don't ever see this. But um uh he said to me, so if my mom has another baby, will I still be your favorite? <laughs> and he said, yes, of course. But that made me think about my father. And he would always tell me that I was his favorite daughter, but it was like you don't have any other daughters. <laughs> So then I, like, when I was younger, then I was like, well, and, you know, the favorite by default then. So. Um, Someone asked about size. This is about 12 inches tall, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're all 12 inches tall. And then the depth and width gets, uh, is different, but, you know, maybe two to five or inches um, wider. Um, the next one is called No Fishing, and these were the, um, these last three pieces that I'll talk about were the new ones that I made for this. So, um, you know, the theme, uh, like Erin and I were talking about before with um, all of the junk pile in here was uh, things that hold water. And um, in the back um, is a little brick wall that I built. So... While I was making this piece, um, I burnt myself really badly <laughs> and not really, really badly, but bad enough. And I broke it. But in the end, oh, and I burned a giant hole in the back of this box by accident. But I was really happy that all of those things happened. Not the burn, but because um, uh, it wouldn't have come out this way if it hadn't. And I was really happy with how this piece turned out. And this one is... Um, you know, mixed media, the fishing pole is uh, wood, bamboo, and um, string and paper, and uh, everything else is glass and, you know, wood and grout and things like that. But um, my friends were telling me about their um, online dating um, experiences, and one of them said that it ruined their life. <laughs> <laughs> and um you know I was thinking as I moved to a new place and I was you know I have a boyfriend but making friends outside of work um and relationships and you know it just becomes hard to do that um once you get to a certain age and also if you are um you know an introvert and it's you know 
exhausting and it's hard sometimes to like meet people or talk about things or think of things to talk about. So, um, you know, it's like, do you want to be alone? Would you rather just be with anybody or, you know, it's like, you know, we're humans. So we like to have um, company anyway. Um, this was a new piece and sort of working with that subterranean um, theme. And back again. And I just really love these little brick walls. It was like, I, I don't know, I guess it reminds me of like Philly and Detroit and not so much of Denver, but um, the next one is called Regulatory Warning and Guide Signs. And my friend John said that I should call it this tight little wagon brings me home. <laughs> and it kind of is applicable because when I moved to Detroit or moved back to Detroit, um, I was going to get an apartment and I had found a place and I was about to sign the lease. And I suddenly started having um, like, I don't want to do this feelings. And I was talking to my brother and I was like, what's wrong with me? Why am I like, do, like, why am I feeling this way? Because I'm very decisive. You know, I make decisions and I stick with them and I'm very confident in um, my decision. So it was really weird for me to be like, why are you changing your mind? And I love Detroit, okay? I know a lot of people don't really like, they, they're, I don't know, they just don't really like it that much there, but it's super cool. Like, I really like that place. And I, it's like the only place that I've lived in that I would ever move back to. So I was like, why do I feel this way? So you're, well, you're welcome to whenever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just changed my mind and I was like, you know what, you should just go with your gut feeling. So I think that a lot of times um people just discount gut feelings. And so um, you know, you set yourself up for, you know, disaster sometimes. Like, I don't know, I'm probably not missing, you know, or nothing would have gone wrong if I moved back to Detroit. Um, but thinking about it now, um, I'm going to like write this story about traveling through different portals and going to, you know, traveling through time and space and everything, then I can't stay in the same place, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, maybe this is part of that journey. And um, intuition is very important for me, like in my work and in my life. So I just decided to go with my gut. And I think, you know, as computer people, and robots and, you know, living in whatever this like time is, we discount our gut feelings, but they are, you know, that's your kind of your, um, your root to the earth and um you know you know more than you actually think you know and i i tell my students that it's like you know how to do this you just gotta think um you know you feel like kind of hone in on that so the next one is the grassy knoll and i may change the um the title of this um once the series develops but um, this is a friend-inspired piece, and it's kind of about my shopmates, and um, they're just really fun to be with, and they're, um, um, I don't know, I just feel very comfortable working here. So the transition from Detroit, not that I didn't, I felt very comfortable in Detroit, too, and I really loved my shopmates there also, but um, I don't know, it's different, and it's the portal. So we have a really good time together and I was sort of changing the, um, I guess the landscape for this series. And, you know, it's still part of my short stories, but um, not in a box. So, um, yeah, that's well, it. Great. Well, well, thank you, Kim, Kim for giving <laughs> us a glimpse yeah. into your life and into your stories. Mm -hmm. This is pretty amazing stuff. And I, I love the way you can kind of dive in you can mm -hmm. almost create like your own space mm -hmm. and uh, kind of feel the narrative of each story and kind of mm -hmm. take what you want from it. And you could, I mean, it depends on your level of depth, you're creating characters or not, but the idea yeah. is you kind of jump in and see and explore and look, I'm glad you're doing what you want to do too and being where mm -hmm. you want to be. Uh, but thank you for joining me today. I'm going to have you stop sharing your screen. Okay. People have been complimentary in the, in the, uh, in the talk space. So thank you all for mm -hmm. joining me today and being part of NGG and, uh, 
and uh, we will continue these meetings uh, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. They will continue virtually as long as you guys show up. And if, if people start getting sick of Zoom, then we'll do them, you know, offline and send you them via email. But uh, we have a price list for Kimberly's five available works uh, in my computer. I haven't put it anywhere yet, but I will. If you want to see them, feel, feel free to contact me. I hope to see you all in Florida for our Glass Coast weekend coming up in February. And I'm only an email away, and so is Kim and everybody else. So, Kim, mm -hmm. I had a quick question for you. What is the name of your uh, studio you're working at now again in, in Colorado? It's called The Portal. The Portal. So just okay. so you know to answer your question, Judy, if you're still here. Mm -hmm. Well, have a good weekend, everybody. It's great seeing you all, and I uh, hope to see you all again next week. Mm -hmm. Talk to you all soon. Thank you, Kim. Bye-bye. Thank you.